Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. We're in a really cool season here at the church where we're seeing so many amazing things. That's actually what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the importance of recognizing what season of life we're in. Because so much of life comes down to seasons. You ever been pushing and pushing and pushing at something and it just doesn't happen? And then you finally give up and then it happens? Ever had that happen to you? It's like, I'm just, just, you've been trying to improve the relationship with your son. You just try and try and try and do everything. And then you finally give up and just pull back and all of a sudden everything. And you get the phone call. He's like, hey, hey, dad, want to hang out? You're like, what just happened? So many times in life, the reason things aren't working is oftentimes it's just because it's, it's not the right season for it. So a few years ago, uh, my wife and I, we moved into um, a, a house that had been vacant for five years. We, it was just outside of Houston. Our neighbor was like, man, I am so glad you moved in. I was always mowing that yard to keep, you know, keep the wild animals out of, out of the yard there. And um, so I was like, okay, we, uh, you know, we moved in, got moved in. And it was, uh, by the time we finally got settled, uh, the yard was just a mess. Everything was a mess. And I was like, you know, I want to plant some stuff. But it was about November. And I was like, man, this is really a bad time to be planting new grass, be planting new flowers, anything like that. So I just let it kind of lay fallow. I got a letter in the mail from the Neighborhood Association. <laughs> They're like, hey, do something about your yard. It ticked me off. I'm like, this thing's been in bad shape for five years. At least I'm keeping it mowed. So this is, you know, I was, I was a little less sanctified back then. So I got a big black Sharpie marker and I just wrote in big, bold letters, it's winter. And I mailed it back to him. Didn't hear from him again. So, but it was interesting because around about January, all of a sudden I started seeing green popping up all over the place. I was like, what is happening? It's winter. Nothing should be popping up right now. And there were these bulbs of narcissus and tulips that just started popping up because they, they, they are drawn to cold. Like cold is the signal to them that it's time for them to pop up. And I thought it was interesting because I didn't plant those flowers. Apparently they've been planted there for a long time, but it was just the right season for those flowers to pop up. And I think that's indicative a lot of times what happens in our lives. There are seasons in our life that are just dry, cold seasons where nothing's happening. Some of you may be in that season this morning. You're going, man, it's just, I'm I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying, but it's not happening. It feels like winter to you, maybe. Then there's other seasons where, man, you just can't keep things from growing. It's like the rain's been coming and you're just like, you can't keep the yard mowed fast enough. Uh, We haven't had one of those recently, you know, it takes rain for that to happen, but... uh, I think it's really important. We've been, we've been looking at this verse. Um, the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. I think it's really important to be aware of what season you're in because a lot of times the decisions you make depend on the season you're in. And a lot of us, we've been in a situation before. I know this, every one of us in this room, we've been in a situation before where you, you've been like, man, I, I just don't know. Is this the right time? And we, we all know the pain or the, 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 um, the regret of having done something a little bit too early. Like you, you wanted it so bad, you just pushed and you pushed and you got it. And then you go, oh, I wish I just would have waited a little bit. You know, you know that feeling? Some of y'all know that because you got a bunch of kids. I wish you would have just waited a little bit, <laughs> right? You're feeling it. You're like, we could have, why were we in such a hurry? And some of you, you know, you're like, there's just so many things in life where we just, we want it now. And you know, we live in a world that'll give it to you right now if you got money. And in fact, they'll give it to you right now even if you don't got money. Just sign on the dotted line. Pay for it the rest of your life. And we all know the regret of having rushed and pushed something too soon and gone, ugh, I wish I would have just waited a little bit. But we also know the regret of having waited too long. You ever had a situation where you just hesitated and then you missed the opportunity? I climbed a mountain a few years ago with a guy that I was like, we're just, for some reason, we we're talking about our biggest regrets. And I was like, what's your biggest regret? And he goes, 
You know, when I was in my teens, a buddy of mine, or like 18, 19, a buddy of mine said, hey, I'm going to buy this sandwich shop. You want to go in on it with me? It's like seven to $10,000 he had to invest. And the guy's like, ah, seven to $10,000, that's a lot of money. And it turns out this sandwich shop had a name that's really weird. It's called Schlotzky's. And he's like, every time I drive by one of those, my heart goes, oh, what could have been? And we all know that the regret of going, man, you know, I just don't know if it's the right time. And then we hesitate and we miss the opportunity. And then we go, oh, anybody been there? A lot of times, whether it's the right season, though, depends on or whether, the, whether it's the right time depends on knowing what is the season we're in. And King Solomon talks about that. Ecclesiastes 3, my favorite book of the Bible. He says this, for everything, there's a season. And there's a time for every matter or every purpose, one of them says, under heaven. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. There's a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Now, I'm guessing about half of those, you don't like those times, right? Who likes mourning? Who likes weeping? Who likes breaking down? Who likes killing? Well... Some people, I, you know, anyway, a lot of these, we go, man, I don't like that. There's a positive and a negative side to all of the things that God has in life. There's these seasons where we're like, I just don't like that season. But every season has a purpose in the grand scheme of things. And we have to recognize that whether it's the right time for something often depends on the season that we're in. And We've all seen this too. If you do the right thing at the wrong time, it actually creates unnecessary suffering. You know, there's some suffering in life that's unnecessary. We just do it because we've made dumb decisions. We've all experienced that. Like you just knew you shouldn't have done that, but you're like, I want it now. And so you pushed it and you go, oh, and then you're paying for it later. There's some, unsus- some uh, suffering that we can avoid through wisdom. But then there's some li- suffering in life that's just necessary. There's this unfortunate verse in Acts. I wish it wasn't there. But it says, through much suffering, we enter the kingdom of God. I wish it would have said, through eating Twinkies and drinking Dr. Pepper, we enter the kingdom of God. Because I would have been set. But it doesn't. For whatever reason, God has chosen to use struggle, difficulties, and suffering for us to enter into a better understanding of who he is in his kingdom. And... A lot of times in life, when we do the right thing at the wrong time, it can create unnecessary suffering. You know, can you imagine if I would have tried to plant that yard in December and right when I had everything going, the first freeze hit? I would have been like, why did I just waste all that money and time? And we've all felt that before. You planted something at the wrong time and you go, oh, I wish I just would have waited. A few years ago, I was working at a church and a new pastor came on board and uh, it was kind of clear after a few months of working with him that I was probably going to need to go do my own thing. And he was, you know, he was going to need to find somebody else. And so we talked and we we're like, I'll probably be phasing out here in the next nine months. Well, one day while I was on vacation, he freaked out and offered my job to another guy without telling me. I was the worship pastor. He didn't fire me. He just didn't tell me he gave my job to someone else. And I remember I was so angry with him. I'm like, why'd you do that? He's well... I just knew we needed to, we didn't have nine months to wait. I'm like, why didn't you have nine months to wait? Well, it was just, um, we're running out of time. He even said this. He's like, I'm running out of time. It's like, what do you, and, and our, it created a huge rift and, and it broke up our friendship and it created a lot of chaos in the church. And look, it was the right thing to do. We needed to part ways, but he did it at the wrong time. And it created just tension. And we, we all know the experience of that. Like, yeah, that was the right thing to do but it was, just wasn't the right time. We talked last week about people that say, you know, my marriage is struggling, my marriage is struggling, I just know once we have a baby, it'll bring us closer together. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe, probably not. Usually adding complexity to complexity does not make simplicity. But we get this idea in our head, if I just get it now, I want it now, and so we push and we push and we push, and it's not the right season for that. There's this verse, um, it's an interesting story. It's when King, King Saul, he had just died. And you'll remember that King David, David was anointed to be the king. They said, You're gonna, God had said, David's going to be your next king. But there was a long period of time between when David was anointed to be the king and he actually became the king. 
And there was a lot of tension between the current king and him. You'll remember Saul was chosen as the first king of Israel. God told Israel, he said, Israel, I want to be your king. I'll be your God. And, and they're like, no, but we want an actual human king, like somebody to rule over us. And God's like, why do you want that? I'll be your king. And I know what's best for you. And, he's like, and they're like, no, we want a king like everybody else. And he's like, all right, I'll give you a king, but just know this, your king is going to tax you. He's going to send your kids off to war. And you're going to call out to me. He says, he's going to do all these things. He's like, you're going to pick this guy. Inflation's going to go crazy. And then you're going to call out to me and say, save us, God. I'm talking about Israel. That's right. So, and you're going to say, God, save us. And he'll be like, no, I'm not going to save you. You picked your king. Live with him. Again, I'm talking about Israel. But there's this time that passes and everybody's like, Saul has clearly lost his mind. Again, I'm talking about Israel. Saul has clearly lost his mind. And they're like, David's probably the guy for the king. But you know, David had all these opportunities to take over the kingdom and he never did it because he's like, nope, the season, the time isn't, isn't right. Well, then Saul dies. And it says there's this verse and it says all of the people of Israel, it says they sent their people to be part of David's army. It says, these are the number of the divisions of the armed troops who came to David in Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul over to him according to the word of the Lord. And then he starts listing off the numbers of all of the tribes that sent people. And there's this interesting passage about these, these guys from the sons of Issachar. It says, and of the sons of Issachar, they sent men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And I thought that was interesting because basically they're saying, now is the right time for this transition. Before it would have been the wrong time and it would have created unnecessary bloodshed for there to be a king. It would have created a revolution. But now is the time for this transition. And I think this is a little, I think this is something for us in here that we need to be people who know the times. We need to know what season we're in so that we can make wise choices in that season. Because there's, there's really three areas of your life where it's very important to know the seasons. You know, there, there's a verse that says we're created in the image of God. And one of the ways that we're created in the image of God, it's a very complex thing. I don't understand all of it. But one of the ways we're created in the image of God is God is three parts. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's called the Godhead. It's all God, but it's three parts. We are, reflect that in some ways because there are three parts to who you are. There's your body, which we all know our body, right? What we're looking at is people, we see bodies. We don't see souls, we don't see spirit, we see the body of someone. That's what interacts with the world around us. But just below the surface, there's a deeper part to you. We talked last week about how King Solomon said the purpose in a man's heart is like a deep well, but a person of understanding will look deep into that well and pull out what that, what's going on inside of them. And there's this part of you that's just a little bit deeper, and that's your soul. And your soul consists of your thoughts, and, and, and your soul, oftentimes your soul impacts what you do in your body. You ever had that where you're like, you have a thought and you act on it and then you go, oh, that was not a good thought. And you pay the price for it in your body, right? Another one is your desires. Your, your soul is made up of your desires, the things you want, your cravings. And then your soul is also made up of your emotions. We're all very emotional beings. In fact, they've pretty much proven that we're more emotional beings than we are thought-driven beings. Even the most logical of us, I think of myself as pretty logical, but if I'm honest, I'm driven more by a feeling and then I find rational arguments to back up what I already felt in my gut. And even the most logical of us were driven by our emotions. I mean, they've proven this scientifically. And we're driven by this. And then there's a, just a little bit deeper is the truest part of who we are, which is our spirit. And it says in the Bible that this spirit is dead before you come to Christ. Part of what we just celebrated here at the baptism is that these people's spirit has come to life. And I don't understand all of how it works, but it says the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus come, from the dead comes and lives in you. And he gives life to your whole body, to all of this. And so there's this element that of, of your spirit that was dead and it comes to life when Christ is in you. And I believe that these are the three domains where we need to be checking what season are we in, in those domains. Because man, there are just seasons in your body where you're just gonna be tired all the time. I've talked about this before. August is a really rough month for Hoel, for me, right? It's a rough month for me because it's hot outside and we're bleeding money because school's starting and we have to buy new clothes for school. I hate the month of August. And you know the craziest thing? 
Two things I love the month most were born in the month of August. I don't know if the Lord gave me that as a gift or what. My, wife's, <laughs> my wife and my daughter are both born in the month of August. And I'm always complaining in August. And they're like, it's our birthday month. Cheer up, buddy. Yeah. Like, and they're all like, let's go eat outside. I'm like, no, AC. We stay in the AC. August is a rough month for me. And I'll find myself angry and frustrated and irritable. And my wife will have to remember, remind me, hey, it's August. You need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Right? Because I, and if some of you that work outside, man, I feel for you. Some of you are like, what's wrong with me? I hate my job. I used to love my job. Well, it's probably because it's August and it's hotter than hell. (laughs) Really, honestly. Sometimes we're so, it's just a season. And you got to recognize, man, poor Jeremy. Jeremy posted one time on Facebook. I thought it was funny. He's like, imagine a job where you went into the air conditioned, these air conditioned places, but the air conditioner never worked. That's his job. He's an air conditioner repairman. He said it more eloquent than that, but I'm like, oh, that does stink. You work inside, but it's never air conditioned because the reason they called you is to come fix the thing that's wrong. Some of you, if you work outside, man, it's just like August. And I found with me, like, I just have no energy in August and September. And I can look at myself and go, why am I so lazy? Or I can realize it's just a season because I come back to life in October. In fact, I started to realize this month that my best book ideas come to me in the month of October. And you know why it is? Because August and September are over. (laughs) Sometimes you're just tired and you just need to recognize it's not that you're lazy. It's just you need to rest. You can't be driving ahead all of the time. And there's some of you that think you have boundless energy. Let me tell you something. You don't. Eventually, if you just keep going, you're going to crash and burn. And that's why Sabbath is so important. God said, I need you to give me one day a week where you just chill out and let me rule the world instead of you trying to because I can take care of it. I built the thing. I'll keep the plate spinning. You just relax and let yourself replenish. And I believe that's not just for our physical bodies, but it's also for our soul. And sometimes, you know, you've had, sometimes there's seasons of grieving where your emotions, you're just like, why can't I pull myself together? It's because you lost your mom. That's why. So just sit in it. Nothing wrong with just sitting in the grieving. It's a season. You don't need to be going starting new things. And some people, when they're in a rough season, what they do is they keep trying to push ahead. They're doing the right thing, but it's the wrong time. And they just create unnecessary suffering. And they get down on themselves. And it's like, well, you're just in a season of grieving and you just need to, to live with it a little while. Well, I don't like the, the discomfort of it. I understand, but remember, there's a time to grieve and there's a time to rejoice. Sometimes in our soul, we're that way. In our spirit, where are you at in your spiritual walk? There's these seasons where there's just, it feels spiritually dry. In fact, Jesus is talking about this. There's this verse where he says this. He says, my father, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. And he says, you know, I'm, 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 I'm raising you up into who you're supposed to be, but know this, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Now, if you look at this and really read what it's saying, it's saying one way or another, you're getting cut, buddy. If you're producing fruit, I'm going to prune you so you produce more. If you're not, I'm going to prune you so we can get rid of the stuff that doesn't need to be there. One way or another, there are going to be seasons of retraction. It's not all about growth all of the time. There need to be winter seasons where there's no external growth, but the growth is going deeper. Your roots are getting deeper. And a lot of us don't like that because growing the roots deeper is uncomfortable. And we'd rather see, oh, I want to see flowers and plants and grapes and apples. And, and God's saying, nope, nope, it's time to work on the roots so that as we expand out here, you're deeper here to hold what I'm going to produce in you. We saw this in COVID a lot. A lot of people in COVID literally flipped out because it was a time of retraction. And yeah, COVID was a horrible thing, but some good things that came out of it was God gave us an opportunity to kind of take a breath, reset, and figure where we are. But you know what a lot of people did? They freaked out. They were forced to actually be in the same house with their spouse. And they were like, whoa, I can't escape you. (laughs) And they flipped out and they got divorces. And really what God was probably saying is, this is a time for you to deepen the marriage because y'all have been growing a little bit apart. But they flipped out. 
And I saw a lot of people there. They're the type that are always taking a hill. What's my next hill to take? I got to take the hill. That's how I know I'm victorious. And God's like, no, stop and take a breather. I'm giving you a chance to take a breather. But what we did instead is we did the right thing right at the wrong time. It wasn't the right time to be taking the ground. There are times to take ground, but sometimes there's time to just sit in it. And I think COVID was a time for us to take a breather. Obviously, there was a lot of turmoil going on. It was hard to do. But that's what happened for a lot of people. It, that's what caused them to flip out because it was a season that they tried to keep doing what they used to be doing in a season that it wasn't for that. Pastor Marcus said that when, when we were at the, when the church was, you know, we saw the church just reduced to nothing essentially during COVID. And he just realized, he's like, we're going to have, we're going to cut out everything we've always done. We're not going to do business as usual. We're just going to stick with focusing on Sunday morning and ministering to people during the week. We're going to cut out all the programs, cut out all the extra stuff we do. I thought that was really insightful because he's like, this is not the season for growth. This is the season for depth of growth in our roots. And we saw the benefits of that. In fact, we're seeing the benefits of that now. But there will be times in your spiritual walk. There's this verse that says this, who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? He's basically saying, those of you who follow Christ, let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is really reassuring to me because what he's saying is even if you trust the Lord and rely on him, you're going to go through seasons where it's cold and wintry in your walk. You're just going to feel like God's silent, man. He's not saying anything to me. You're going to feel like that coat you forgot was left in the closet and you go, oh, I forgot I had this really nice coat because you only have to use it one day a week, or one day a year in Texas. And then you open up like, oh, I have this really great coat. You know, you ever felt like that coat forgotten in God's closet? God's like, oh, Joel, you're still in here? Man, I've totally forgot you were in there, bro. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes we have seasons like that and it's okay. There are spiritual seasons where it's cold, but what's happening in that, if you'll embrace it, is he's making your roots deeper, That's right. your faith stronger. You don't need faith when it's sunshine and unicorns prancing through the sky. You only need faith when it gets really, really dark, right? When you go, I cannot see what's ahead. And God's like, right, well, now for the first time, you can actually practice faith. Because a lot of times what we've been saying is faith is actually us just setting up our plans and then walking forward and being like, God, bless my plans. And he's like, I don't work that way. Yeah, I'll bless you, but sometimes you, like, you got to do it my way if you really want the blessing. And there are seasons that are going to be like that. And, and it's pruning. And that's what right here, pruning is, is vital for healthy growth. If you know that anything about growing plants, man, you don't want plants that are growing crazy and wild all over the place because it's using all the nutrients that could be going towards producing good fruit into these wild branches that are shooting all over the place. There's a vineyard just about a mile from our house in Kerrville. And I went out there and I was watching the guy prune. And he was so meticulous about it. And he's like, well, here's the thing. He's like, there's only so much water to go into these plants. And if the water is going up towards one of these shoots that was, is useless, the fruit's not going to be plump and juicy. So he's like, I cut off that. And it's like, well, you're cutting off that poor limb that's just trying to live. No, it's actually sucking energy from what's most important in your life. And oftentimes God will take this pruning season and he'll take times and he'll just start snipping away at stuff. And you're like, ow, what are you doing, God? I needed that. And he's like, actually, no, that's actually holding you back from what you really need. And you go, why did you take it away? And you know this, if he took it away from you, you needed it taken away. And, and one of the key things to do to recognize is when it's time to be pruned, keep your eyes off the pruning shears and on the one doing the pruning. Because God will use all sorts of things to cut back things in your life. That illness, you go, oh, why would he do this to me? Well, I don't know if God did it to me or not, but he, I'll guarantee you this, he'll use it for his purposes. And maybe the purpose was to finally slow you down a little bit and relax and rest in him. My grandfather, I'll never forget, he was always going, just go, 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 all the time. And the last few uh, months of his life, he was bedridden. And I remember he called me in one day and he said, Joel, God has taught me more laying in this bed about him than I think I've learned my whole life. I thought, wow, just even to the very end, God is completing the work in my grandfather. And he didn't like it. There's a season to be bedridden. He didn't like that. But God was like, I'm going to accomplish my purposes. I'm going to grow the roots deep in you to the very end. Because it's really not the end. Death is just the beginning of a new phase of eternity. And there are seasons where it's just going to feel like he's cutting back and cutting back. And I would encourage you, don't fight it. 
go with it. Say, God, I don't know why you're taking this out of my life, but I trust that you're going to make my roots deeper and the fruit even richer. And know this, eventually spring will come. A season will come when you'll see growth. And this is the danger when we start to see growth in the seasons of growth. You know, right before the children of Israel took the promised land, they had been delivered from slavery in Egypt and then they wandered for 40 years in the desert. God had to take the slavery out of their mindset and turn them into warriors. And right before he sent them in there, he said, hey guys, I want to warn you on something. You're coming into a season of blessing, but here's going to be the temptation when you come into the season of blessing. He said, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors. And this word, you could replace it not just with wealth, but with any kind of prosperity or success you see. There will come a season where, man, you may have been pushing and pushing and plowing the hard ground, but if you plant the seed and stick around long enough, you will get to sit in the fruit of the seeds that you planted. But you got to hang on. And then the temptation is when you start to, when you get into that season where it's like God's blowing in your direction, all the doors are blowing up and you go, look at me, I'm awesome. And he's like, <laughs> remember that dark season? I was in that just as much as I'm in this. And don't forget me. Because you will see a season of success, I guarantee it. If you stick it out long enough, stay true, stay committed, stay faithful, you'll see that success. But don't forget your Lord, your God in that. So let me ask you this. What's the season you're in right now? Is it a season right now where God's just been pruning you and you've been fighting it and maybe you just need to go, all right, Lord, I surrender. I don't know why you're taking all this stuff away, but I'm trusting that you got a good plan for my life. Maybe you're in a season right now where it's go time and you're afraid. God's like, I'm about to pour out a harvest in your life, but you're gonna have to take some risky steps. And you're like, ah, last time I did that, you didn't come through. Well, maybe it was because you were pushing during a dry season. And that disappointment you've been feeling, maybe it's time to pick yourself up and try again because now is the time for the blessing. And you needed that failure to remind you that's yeah, not by your power anyways that it happens. Maybe this is the blessing season. I'm telling you this, right now at the church here, we're in a blessing season. If you're in a dry season right now and you're looking for some hope, you need to get engaged with this church. We plowed some hard ground during COVID. Pastor Marcus and Natalie, man, they plowed some hard ground and they planted some seeds that now we're seeing people Oh, I mean, just look at the baptisms this morning, right? We're in a season right now. And it's crazy. We're in a season in our, our state right here of growth. And some of you are like, I don't like this growth. All these people coming in from other states. Well, listen, a lot of them are political refugees. I've been talking to a lot of people who are like, man, I didn't want them teaching my kid at school up in the Northwest that, that my, my son could have a baby if he wanted like, you know, trans, trying to trans our kids or whatever. And so they fled that and they came to here and they found Jesus and they found Crossroads and God spoke to them and then they got baptized today. Like we're seeing that a lot. And I'm telling you this, if you're in a dry season right now, maybe the best thing you could do is get to a place where there's a lot of growth going on so you can stay encouraged and not give up hope. Because we're in a season of growth right now, but you don't judge your season versus another season. You may be in a dry season, your friends are in a growth season, don't compare. Stay faithful to what God's put in front of you right now. And you'll see, eventually, you're going to come to an abundant season. So what season are you in? Is it a spring season where you need to be planting? Plant, 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 plant. Maybe you're in a summer season where it's just like the, the harvest is starting to come, but you're scared. You're like, I don't know what to happen. Maybe it's fall season. And it is time to bring in the harvest. Or maybe you're in a season right now where it just seems everything's dead, spiritually, emotionally, Know this, God hasn't forgotten you in the middle of it. He's just putting your roots deeper. So lean into it. And you may not see a lot of fruit out here, but know this, the roots are going deeper in preparation for what he has ahead for you. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It will shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until the fullness of day. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. He has not forgotten you. Let us not grow weary in doing good for at the right time we will reap a harvest. If we don't, give up. So don't give up. Stay faithful and just be asking, what season am I in? And make wise choices based on the season you're in. You guys receive that? Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. 
or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings. <laughs>